सो हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय न्यू वीडियो सो टुडे इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस विद यू ऑल अबाउट गोनियोस्कोपी इंडिकेशन एंड कंट्रा इंडिकेशन इन माय लास्ट वीडियो आई हैव डिस्कस विद यू ऑल अबाउट गोनियोस्कोप इट्स एक्चुअली प्रिंसिपल इट्स टाइप एंड इट्स प्रोसीड्यूर एंड आल्सो वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द इंडिकेशन कंट्रा इंडिकेशन बट देयर इज लॉट्स ऑफ पीपल हु आर टेलिंग मी अगेन एंड अगेन टू अपलोड अ सेपरेट वीडियो ऑन गोनियोस्कोपी इंडिकेशन एंड कंट्रा इंडिकेशन सो दिस वीडियो इज फॉर फॉर दोस पीपल ओके सो From this video, you will get to know when to do cornioscope and when not to do cornioscope. And uh, in this presentation, you will get to know, uh, or you are going to see different types of clinical finding in entry chamber angle, right? So, uh, cornioscopy here two terms are coming: cornio and scopy. Cornio means angle, scopy means to examine. So, it is the technique that is used to uh, view the entry chamber angle of the eye for evaluation, management, and classification of different types of abnormalities that we see in entry chamber angle, right? so this is the diagrammatic uh, picture of uh, anterior chamber angle structure here we will go from anterior to posterior okay so anteriorly it is actually start from swellby's line then trabecular meshwork now trabecular meshwork is divided in two part non pigmented and pigmented non pigmented uh, non pigmented trabecular meshwork is called anterior trabecular meshwork pigmented trabecular meshwork is called to be pigmented is called as posterior trabecular meshwork right after the scleral spur and then ciliary body band and then iris right So this is the principle that I already discussed in my last video that it is based on total internal reflection. So these are the indication of gonioscopy that first of all suspected angle closure, any sign of angle closure disease like neovascularization of iris, pancreatic rating zero one two, family history of glaucoma, history of using anti glaucoma medication, known case of glaucoma, elevated IOP, pigment dispersion syndrome, blunt trauma, pseudo exfoliation syndrome, retinal vascular occlusion, high myopia, hypermetric silicon oil insertion. uh these are the indications so we are going to discuss each and everything separately okay so first of all let's start with the sep- mm-hmm. suspected angle closure when you will suspect the angle is closed suppose uh, you are doing slit limb examination of patient and you find that there is asymmetrical ac depth in the two i okay then you will decide to do gonioscope where the ac depth is appearing as shallow how we measure ac depth by using the van herik rating then uh, that means we have to make the optic section as narrow as possible and place the optic section as periphery of the cornea and then compare the ac depth with the corneal thickness if the ac depth is more than the corneal thickness then write that pacd more than 1 cd here and if if the ac depth is equal to the corneal thickness you will write it like pacd is equal to 1 cd If the AC depth is less than the corneal thickness, then uh, it is rated PACD is equal to half CT or PACD less than half CT depending on that. So when Herrick rating four three, if you find that it is actually in four or three, then you need to you don't need to perform gonioscopy. But if you find that the when Herrick rating is actually at two one or zero, then you need to perform gonioscopy in those cases. Okay. Now known case of glaucoma or use of anti glaucoma medication. There is three things can happen, right? So first of all, patient is having glaucoma, that's why he is using anti-glaucoma medication. It can happen, or the patient may have angle suspect or shallow angle, so he is already using anti-glaucoma medication for prevention purpose. This also can happen, or history of increased intraocular pressure was done previously, so the prevention purpose he is actually using the anti-glaucoma medication. This thing also can happen, right? After that, elevated IOP. Suppose you are doing ablation tonometry to the patient, and you find that the patient IOP is more than 22 mm of Hg. then you have to perform gonioscopy in that case to rule out any type of angle abnormality or it can be angle closure or it can be presence of uh, new vascularization or angle pigmentation anything can happen so to rule out those things you need to perform gonioscopy in that case right now nvi and nva when we see nvi that is a new vascularization of iris okay so in case of established proliferative diabetic retinopathy there is a tendency of new vascularization there is other condition like central retinal vein occlusion then also you will find the tendency of new vascularization in the iris you will find it so it is two types two things normal new vascularization and abnormal new vascularization so you need to differentiate you know, that is it a normal new vascularization or abnormal so normal new vascular new vascularization normal vessels of the iris okay if to be normal vessels and abnormal vessels right so normal vessels how you can understand that normal vessels uh, arrangement will be linear and there will be no abnormal uh, branching pattern that we, you will see in the normal uh, vessels but in case of abnormal vessels like in case of nvi in in case of uh, diabetic retinopathy or crvo then the i vessels will actually uh, randomized and disturbed form so you have to think about this thing that okay find this i actually blood vessels are not looking normal so it can have uh, some uh, abnormality in the angle also so to rule, rule out those things you have to perform gonioscopy to those cases right 
and after that pigment dispersion syndrome so pigment dispersion syndrome is the condition where there is de deposition of the pigment of from the iris uh, to the aquasimar and it get flow out with the aquasimar and it gets stuck on the trabecular meshwork now in infant there is no pigmentation or there is nothing pigmentation is there in the infant or young people but as the age progress there is a gradual amount of pigmentation can also be seen in those cases right normally in the inferior quadrant pigmentation is more because due to the gravitational force the pigment that are coming from the iris due to the aging process get stored on the inferior quadrant but what happen if the present if there is a presence of pigment dispersion syndrome that is the abnormal thing where uh, there is a we will you will see that pigmentation is present in the superior quad, uh, uh, quadrant also along with the nasal and temporal that is abnormal that is not seen in the normal cases so in that case you need to perform gonioscopy right or there is specific uh, sign uh, that will tell you to uh, tell you to perform gonioscopy in that case there is the presence of this Krukenberg spindle there is a linear arrangement of pigmentation on the corner endothelium so this is the specific sign of pigment dispersion syndrome now why pigment dispersion syndrome happen due to the concavity of the iris due to this concavity this iris actually touching to the lens zonule and due to this rubbing or friction uh, between the iris and the lens zonule there is a deposition of the iris pigment on the aqua humor so this uh, abnormal deposition of the aqua humor will get stored on the different quadrants of the anterior chamber angle that will ultimately that will ultimately lead to elevation of the iop so if it is long continued then it will lead to uh, increase of intraocular pressure then it will it can damage the optic nerve and then it can lead to glaucoma so at that time we will call this glaucoma is pigmentary glaucoma so pigment pigmentary uh, like scia uh, actually scia grading system is followed in uh, documentation of the pigmentation so here this is the grade zero where there is no pigmentation you will not see any pigmentation but as the uh, um, pigmentation grade getting increased the uh, it is actually one two three four so in grade four you will not able to see anything right you will not able to see uh, the spirals power you will not able to see swelvis line or atm ptm nothing only pigmentation will be there so it is actually an indication that the person is having pigment dispersion syndrome and he may lead to pigmentary glaucoma in the future now blunt trauma so in case of blunt trauma what happen is that uh, there is a presence of hyphema or all those things okay if there is presence of hyphema you will need to you need to avoid uh, doing gonioscopy in that case but suppose there is no hyphema but then uh, you need to perform gonioscopy uh, if the patient is not symptomatic then you need to perform gonioscopy but if the patient is very symptomatic then you should avoid gonioscopy in that case and wait for some follow-up visit and after that you need to perform gonioscopy when the patient is actually recovered from those things right so in case of uh, blunt trauma why it is actually indication because it is a um, risk of angle recession so to rule out this uh, you need to perform gonioscopy because angle recession can also lead to angle recession glaucoma so all these things that i am telling like pigment dispersion syndrome or angle recession these are actually leading to secondary glaucoma not the primary glaucoma that is due to primary glaucoma is actually due to the open angle or closer angle right so here this is the pseudo exfoliation syndrome so in case of pseudo exfoliation syndrome there is white fluffy material deposition on the lens epithelium and those fluffy material actually uh, comes along the aqua humor and it also get uh, stuck to the pupillary margin area like this white matter so it is actually called as rough iris rough okay so in this cases also you need to perform gonioscopy right this is the retinal vascular option that i already told you that in case of these things uh, you need to perform gonioscopy uh, to rule out an nvi <coughs> So this is the UVM picture. Uh, in case of uh, myopia, high myopia or hypermetropia, um, uh, there is presence of concave iris or convex iris. Myopia, people having concave iris and hypermetropic patient having convex iris, right? So uh, suppose uh, you are doing uh, gonioscopy and you find that in iris is still looking like a concave manner, then you need to send the patient for uh, ASOCT or UVM ultrasound biomicroscopy for the properly identification of the iris pattern so here mm, this is normal but when this concavity is getting more then this uh, iris actually touching to the lens zonule and from here the pigment deep deposition is happen and when aqueous humor come from this area to this area pigment getting stored in this area in a Krukenberg spindle manner that is a radial manner now here convex iris it is actually indicating three things one is a plateau iris another is pupillary block or another is a uh, closer angle glaucoma right so iris block, pupillary block, here the lens is touching the uh, lens, uh, iris is touching the lens so that 
the echo is even not getting not able to pass through it so it is actually pushing pressure to it and it is actually moving forward so in this cases there is a present chance of angle closure so to rule out those things if you in your uh, setup examination you, if you are fi uh, finding that the iris actually look like a convex shape you need to perform gonioscopy to this piece and you need to do the indentation gonioscopy where um, to rule out a positional or synecal angle closure right Another thing is the presence of silicon oil. So suppose the patient has undergone any vitreoretinal surgery and silicon oil insertion was done. So when mm, in the next visit, previously silicon oil insertion was done. So but uh, to rule out that some amount of silicon oil uh, insertion or silicon oil is not in the uh, AC or due to the silicon oil that is no deposition is getting on that uh, AC angle, then uh, in those cases uh, for those reasons you need to perform gonioscopy to those cases, right? Now let's discuss about the contraindication. Contraindication is actually mean that uh, if, there, if there is presence of any corneal infection, you don't need to perform gonioscopy to that case. Like in case of corneal keratopathy, endothelial cell damage, perforating eye injury, corneal ulcer, where presence of uh, epithelial defect or uh, re recurrent corneal erosion, hypotony. In case of hypotony, you should avoid gonioscopy because if you do gonioscopy, then there is chance of retinal detachment. In case of severe dry eye conjunctivitis and hyphema, in those cases, you need to avoid gonioscopy, right? This is the normal AC angle. So here, this is the swellvis line. This is non-pigmented and pigmented tubular meshwork, ciliary body band, and this is the iris. Okay. So you need to see accordingly. So it depends upon you that you start from anterior to posterior, posterior to anterior. Okay. This is the peri peripheral anterior synechia. As you can see here, uh, there is an attachment between iris and the tubular meshwork through this area. So this is actually synechia formation, PAS. Okay. Uh, another thing is that uh, angle neovascularization. Uh, sorry, no, it is actually peripheral into synechia, right? Here also. Here, iris recession, here, the detachment of iris is that you can see from its base, right? This is the wide open angle. Uh, and here, new vascularization, you can see this is the new vascularization, it is abnormal looking. Here, this is the synechia formation between iris and the cornea. This is also synechia formation here. Mm, Microhyphema. So, in case of chronic hyphema, uh, you can do uh, gonioscopy to rule out the presence of blood on, on the AC. Foreign body here, you can see the foreign body here. And this is the pigment dispersion syndrome where there is a deposition of pigment so that it is difficult to see the you know, service line, ATM, PTM, all those things. And this is also a uh, synechia formation here. Okay, so that's all. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I hope this video helped you to understand uh, something more uh, about the indication, contraindication about uh, gonioscopy. And I hope uh, in your OPD practice also, you will keep in mind that when to perform gonioscopy and when not to perform gonioscopy. Right. Thank you so much.